uh, today I'm gonna be talking about how I made this uh, image this is my latest image I made it on Tuesday no Saturday so what two or three days two or three days ago um, before I forget I wanted to uh, remind you if you guys don't know for whoever doesn't know that uh, you can find all my latest work and my latest everything on my website here it's uh, aows.co and uh, yeah you have all my recent images and everything i'm mentioning this because i just released a new book a new ebook that is uh, this one lightroom cc workflow and uh, i made a video that i posted on this uh, channel a few days ago what i did is i just wrote everything down in a in book form because i think that it would be much more useful for some people than just watching a, a long video but you can do both you can read the book and watch the video or do nothing if you are not interested so if you want to get your copy this is for free uh, you can just go here to my website publications and you have here the lightroom cc workflow click on learn more and then you have the link here and as i said it's a free download pdf and if you wanna i sent this uh, book to all my uh, newsletter subscribers if you want to uh, stay up to date on all these things sorry adrian i don't really know siri anyway uh as i said if you want to stay up to date on all these things you can just subscribe to my subscribe to my newsletter anyway let's go back to what uh what we were talking about today that is uh, this photo i'm gonna show you in this video i think it would be interesting to show you how i made it how how i made this image from the very beginning about how i took it and uh, how i edited it so i have a little video here uh, this is uh, the location is called san pedro de rocas i guess the translation would be saint peter of uh, the rocks it's some 40 minutes away from here so uh, I found myself, uh, this is important to mention too, I found myself uh, on Saturday with a little bit of a spare time and I wanted to take some photos, but I wasn't sure about where to go. So as I mentioned uh, many, many times on the blog, one of the important things or one of the key things to my whole workflow, photography workflow, is to have a list of potential places where to go when I find myself in a situation like that. Oh, I have two or three hours uh, free. Uh, so where do I go? So I just pull out uh, my uh, list of uh, places and I just choose one that is within a uh, reasonable drive for the amount of spare time that I have. Uh, in this case, this was the, the place that I chose from that list. Um, by the way, this is not a, an actual list. Um, I'm going to show you, I should be showing you a, a screen recording of my iPhone because this uh, my list is actually uh, Google Maps. I just bookmark places there. Uh, so I just have to open Google Maps and I know the places that are around me to go to. So that's how I chose this location. Uh, as I said, it's called San Pedro de Rocas. And uh, I had seen photos before on the internet. That's how I, I added it to my list. But I didn't know this location. I had never been there before. And that is important because uh, when you get to a location for the first time, you still don't know. You have seen photos, but you don't know where you can stand. You don't know if the place is open. You don't know anything about that location. You don't know where you can put your tripod. Uh, for example, in this case, let me show. I have the let me show you. I have the scene here. This is what I uh, what I found there. This is what I was facing. So uh, one of the things that I didn't know about this place is if I, if I was going to have enough room to actually back up and use my uh, widest lens, widest widest lens that is uh, 24 millimeters. So I was worried that in my in my it could not be wide enough uh for this uh, composition but i had a lot of room so i could back up uh, the problem one of the things about this uh, scene is that the the subject that i was going to take uh, or that i was interested in that it was these uh, arches here and then the the gate the, the image is actually called a uh, gate and this path uh, it's a uh, very vertical so uh, as you know i shoot in a square uh, most of the time and that means that uh, to fit that subject the whole thing i will have to include more uh, elements in the in the frame this could be like a square frame um this is one of the most important aspects of photography is crucial is uh, a photographer should know uh, what to leave out and what to leave in and uh, what you leave out is uh, it matters as much as what you leave in uh, and it's a decision that you have to make every single time you take a photo so in this case, I knew that the, the left part of the photo was lacking any kind of interest. 
it was uh, just trees that didn't add anything to to the composition or anything i didn't like the foreground either I, it would be a different story if i had a if I, if it had a longer path but it didn't and the building was better it, it had some interest of course but uh, i was worried that if i included uh, too much of it uh, it would distract from the side that i wanted that i wanted to capture and it would almost not quite but almost become uh, a subject in itself so uh, what i did is okay i don't want to get the foreground so that my composition is going to start here and it's going to end more or less here giving this a little a little bit of empty space and then i just had to walk forward and back forward and back uh, until i got uh, the composition that i i liked and in this case was this one right here more or less and i this didn't bother me too much uh, but uh, i knew that all this area would get um, darkened in photoshop later or in lightroom uh, because i didn't want any or not many details on this side i i knew i was going to remove this sign i don't usually remove any elements from the photo but in this case it's an ugly sign and it's white so it could distract from the subject i don't think that uh, manipulates anything in here and that's totally fine in my book and the building actually uh i liked it uh, this way because uh, it, the the way it was placed there all the lines they were leading to the to the actual gate as you can see so i was okay with this composition even though i had to add more elements than uh, that i wanted to uh, i didn't know i was expecting or i was hoping to get um let me remove all these lines at first i was before i got there i was hoping to get a view from this side so i would be facing that straight on so i i wouldn't have to add any of the building or a little bit and no trees but these uh, branches and these leaves were totally in the way so that, that that place didn't work so that's why i'm saying that even though uh, you can look at images online you still have to to go there and actually see the place by by yourself uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah the technical challenges about this photo that's about the composition now about the technic technical uh, challenges is that the it was a sunrise so uh, the sun was almost behind this building so this whole scene was almost backlit it was very bright there and this part the gate was very dark so i thought about using an nd grad filter that's what i could do in a situation like this but it's it could be almost impossible here this is like a triangle so the only way to use an nd grad filter i guess it would be like placing it like this but uh, on my composition i remind you that it was like this it would create like a natural dark areas here that maybe it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter too much because i was already going to uh, to darken uh, all of this but here that was the problem that um it would create a difference between this part and this part that it would be very very hard to to solve in post and I, that's not something that i really uh, want to do uh, spend hours and hours like that so what i did i just bracketed my shots i took uh, two exposures two long exposures one minute each one of them I exposed for the sky, one of them, uh, the other one I exposed it for, for, the, for the structure. So I'm going to show you here how I did it. So that's how I got to the location. I'm setting everything up for the long exposure. And this is, uh, as I said before many times, I used uh, P mode. Uh, and uh, I just modified the exposure compensation here. In this case, the camera uh, was trying to actually expose for all these dark areas of the photo but it was uh, completely clipping the highlights so i, I had to reduce this uh, or underexpose what the camera was telling me by one stop and then uh, i was looking i knew that the shutter speed was going to be uh, 1 15th because i was using a 10 stop nd filter and uh, 1 15th is one minute i like to use one minute as much as i can if the shot includes clouds because i like the fact that it creates on the clouds uh, it's not a fixed rule but one minute two minutes uh, i like a 30 seconds one minute two minutes uh, not shorter not longer uh, than those but one minute is the perfect spot spot for me so what i have to do here is just look change the the def stop until i get to that shutter speed at iso 100 in this case it's f13 so what i do later is from p mode i switch to manual mode and what i have to do in manual mode of course is uh, bulb because it's a exposure and then just uh, switch the f-stop to that f13 
and just keep the ISO to 100. Now I focus. I was focusing on the on the arches there, on the structure, whatever you want to call it. And then I switch to manual focus because it has happened to me not very often, but sometimes that uh, the camera switches or refocuses during the long exposure and everything is blurry and everything is it's not it's not it's not fun. Uh, so then I just put the ND filter on and I shoot the photo. Of course, I use a remote for this. I have a very cool Casio watch, uh, so I know when to stop it. And this was the first exposure here. As you can see, I was exposing for, for the buildings and for all the dark areas, so the highlights were not clipping, but almost, and it's really hard to see in this camera. I, I had to use the viewfinder, but uh, it's really hard to see on the screen of this camera in broad daylight. But uh, they were pretty close to clip, but they didn't clip. Uh, but I still took the other shot just in case. And the, what I did is I just changed the changed the exposure compensation to uh, minus so underexposing two stops, and that gave me the same shutter speed, of course, one fifteenth of a second. But f uh, well, one fifteenth of a second to to get that one minute with the same ND filter f sixteen. That's uh, when I got the the exposure for the sky. Uh, in this case, as you can see here, uh, the highlights are much, much better. There. So at, at that time, I knew that I, I had gotten it, I, I got it, and I can just uh, keep having fun or shooting more photos. Uh, that's when I shot all my photos with the X100T, the Fuji camera. I had that video, I'm going to link it somewhere around here. Uh, yeah, but about the shot uh, that was said about taking it. And now, let me show you how I edited it. So this is the. So so it sort of shows nobody really knows what they're doing, and I kind of find that across every industry. You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. Yes. Yeah, it's a. Uh... Whoa! Started playing podcast by itself. Anyway, I have these two. This one was exposing for the sky. This one was exposing for for the structure here. So what I did is I blended the two exposures and. Lightroom. This was the result that I got. Uh, as you can see, this uh, this image has all the this uh, this is a DNG and it has all the information uh, from the two shots, from the highlights and the shadows. Now here, this is uh, after cropping the image to to a square. Uh, I compose the the square composition, the field. So the crop usually uh, corresponds to just do it in Lightroom like this. Just comp for example, let me show you everything here so i all i have to do for a square is usually come here at one one uh, is usually the composition that uh, that i i was composing uh, on the field i but having the three by two image the digital image the raw file it helps it gives you a little bit of flexibility if you have to change the crop uh, but yeah this is the next step where i crop it and i apply a preset uh, i think i i talked about my preset before it's nothing special, but it just converts the image to black and white. It's just a starting point. It would be like uh, this would be like my negative. Uh, I have it cropped and I have it uh, uh, already in black and white. Now I have to adjust, of course, the exposure because uh, this is very dark and the sky is very, very bright. So what I do next, I change the <laughs> a few things, but I just raise the shadows a little bit. And importantly, too, I change uh, the profile. Let me show you here on Lightroom uh, the profile here to black and white red filter so it simulates or emulates or whatever the word is uh, a red filter making the blue sky uh, very very dark uh, so this is starting to look better closer to what I was seeing there but uh, the problem here was the gate that is very very dark I knew when I took the photo that I was uh, going to work on this so the next step would be to work on the areas that I want to highlight. And this was uh, one of them. I wanted to highlight this uh, lighter part of the gate. That is the only part of the gate that wasn't uh, covered in moss. And of course, the, the path. So for that, I used a, a brush. Um, and a lot of patience because it takes a long time. But that's, uh, this, is what I, this is what I got. Uh, this is much, much brighter. 
So before here, uh, when you see this photo for the first time, in theory, the eye goes to the brighter, not the brighter part of the photo, but the brighter part of the photo in comparison with the rest of the photo. So this is a very dark photo. Uh, and this uh, the bright part is on the edge, so even attracts the, the eye even more. So your eye would come here first, and maybe the building, ideally the building would lead you to this structure, that it would be the main subject, but that, that's about it. Uh, the viewer would have to figure out everything else by themselves. So uh, highlighting these parts makes the viewer still, the, the eyes will still come here first, but then once you are done here, the, your eyes will be attracted by the next uh, bright thing that is this one. Hopefully, that's the idea. Now, if you realize another thing that I did, these are spots where the light was uh, coming through the leaves from behind, they are much darker here. That's another brush. Um, uh, the idea was to make them uh, less uh, distracting. See again? Jeez. Less distracting from uh, the photo uh, or for the photo. Da, da, da. So what else? Well, let me show you. Oh yeah, the next step is the to remove this sign and remove some spots like this one, like this one. But mostly the sign here because it was annoying me a lot. So yeah, that CC healing brush, uh, it's gone. Yeah, as uh, are the other spots in the photo. So this this is pretty much done. So the next step, the last step. Well, not the last step, because uh, the last step would be ideally to print it, but uh, I haven't printed this photo. Uh, I might have to, or I might want to in the future. In that case, I would have to work again on this photo to make some adjustments. I would have to print it first to see how it looks, and blah, blah, blah. But in this case, the last uh, adjustments that I do here is that I just, I just add a little bit of vignette, a little bit of uh, grain to simulate some film, or to make it not that perfect. So this is the, the result, as you can see, the, the vignette there helps a little bit uh, and, uh, to center the attention, or to focus the viewer here in the in the center. So yeah, this is the end result. This is pretty much it. Uh, I think I showed you everything from when I took it to how I edited it. And this uh, image is pretty much ready to go uh, to my website. and. Instagram, whatever you want to publish it, to share it with your friends and family and blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you guys have any question about this process or if you want me to do, to do more videos like this or not, stop, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, just leave a comment down below and let me know. Uh, but that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.